after what he calls a semester of disrespect, backstabbing, lying, and cheating, Erwin Horwitz had all he could take. Yesterday, I finally reached the breaking point. He sent a lengthy email to his strategic management class, explaining that they would all be failing the course. We are far too often seeking out those educators who take the job seriously, not those who job the system for greedy purposes, such as the crimes of numerous hack teachers in Atlanta we saw recently, but those who understand the job is to educate. The student's job is to learn. And when one side fails to deliver, you bring the hammer down and you stand your ground. Our guest is the associate professor in the Department of Maritime Administration at Texas A&M University in Galveston. He called his spring 2015 students the worst he'd seen in 20 years of teaching college, and to prove his point, he did fail the entire class. And it's what happened after the incident that draws our attention. Let's welcome Professor Erwin Horowitz to Midpoint. Professor, I want to thank you so much for joining us here. Hi, it's nice to see you, Ed. Would you do it again? Absolutely. Were they as bad as you said they were? Um, and as you were quoted as saying? Most were as bad, if not worse. Why? What was it about that? Were they just unruly? Did they not want to learn? Did they throw things in class? Uh, well, they spit on my notes. I didn't see anything thrown in class. Um, there was um, bad language in class. There was cheating in class, taking photographs of, of examinations in class. and Cheating? Oh, outright cheating. Um, bad behavior, behavior between each other. I mean, it was, a, it was a terrible dynamic in and of itself. The national media, when they did this story, and we also talked to you previously about this, were you characterized properly in how you handled this? Do you think the stories were fair? No. Well, yes and no. I, I mean, I think the media, because of the very limited time, and at the time, too, the Baltimore riots were going on. So mm -hmm. they didn't have a lot of time to devote to my story, to, to really get to the bottom of what was really going on. So they just, they, they, they showed, uh, you know, the letter that um, you had just quoted for, from a minute mm -hmm. ago, and then the student reactions, and then, you know, just a minute or two of me talking. With regard to the students themselves and the fact that you failed them, have any of them come to you since that time and said, you were right? Have they, have, has anyone communicated with you and said that you did the right thing? Um, not from that class. Uh, students from other classes have said that. Um, I've received lots of emails from educators all over the country that have expressed similar frustration with their classes. Um, some of them, it was very sad, that have you know, walked away from academia from the way that these students have been treating them. Does this speak to an entitlement? Because it really seems to me that you have not only kids, but you and I spoke a little bit before the segment here. There's also parents who feel entitled. Look, you're the teacher. You better get my kid an A. Yes, and I, I think that that's what's happening now is, is what we're seeing. I mean, people, people are very quick to say, well, these kids are entitled. But I think what we have here is a second generation of entitlement. The first being the parents, now the kids, and I don't know what their kids are gonna be like, but That's this generation of kids now goes and says, mommy, daddy, I got an F in strategic management. Well, in my day, if I said, mommy, daddy, I got an F in strategic management, they'd say, you go back and you finish that degree and you do what it takes to, to, to pass that class. Now it's a customer driven mentality. Uh, uh, schools have become a business model. That's a terrible thing to say, that it's, that it's customers. This is supposed the to be learning for are, the rest of your life. The students are our customers and the students are always right. And the students apparently were right in this because you gave them failing grades and the university came back and changed them. The university came back, and in fact, I, what I brought along with me was that famous note that they've shown on the air and, and you know, where I failed them. But I'm going to read you one sentence that Very I wrote. Very briefly. Take about 20 seconds. I'm sure many of you will line up to appeal, just as you did when you received grades you did not like. And from what I've seen, the school pays but lip service to their honor, honor code, so it's likely many of uh, you will win such appeals. In fact, 85% <laughs> of the students in that class were given... A's and B's. But you still feel that they didn't do the work, they didn't earn the work, so they don't deserve that A and No, that they didn't earn the work whatsoever. So where do we go from here then is the next. I got about two minutes left and I want to make sure we push this forward. You have educators who are upset about this, educators who want to walk away from teaching kids like this. You have entitled parents, entitled students. How do we solve this? Where do we start? <laughs> we have to start 
there's no easy solution, but if we're going to start, we have to start by putting our foot down and saying, hey, back in the day, it used to be that you pay your tuition as a right to attempt to get a, a degree, and then you have to work for the degree and show competency for the degree, as opposed to the customer mentality now of, hey, I paid this money uh, for tuition, where's the piece of paper that I paid for? And there's a big difference between earning that piece of paper and just paying for it. And you're talking about teachers themselves have to buy into this, and they have to also teachers be part of it by to, realizing teachers they are not put, just delivering to a customer. That's right, because they changed the grades that, that um, they were part of the, the grade changes, although that came from the administration. But nobody wants to fail the kids because the same thing will happen to them, that they're going to get their grades changed. So what happens is, and, and, and when you add an honor code to it, like Texas A&M did, well, we have an honor code. It makes them more hypocritical to t turn around and just erase the grades and give the kids what, what they want or the parents That's want. That's pathetic. i got 30 seconds left. Will you stay a teacher? Does this uh, deter you at all? And will you stay at Texas A&M? <sighs> Well, Texas A&M is, is, is completely a hostile work environment, and it was, I mean, even when I was there, they were, they were spitting in my notes, as I told you, mm -hmm. they were swearing, acting all sorts of, of ways, and so Texas doesn't seem like they're able to, to get, a, get any control over their kids. And but are you going to stay there? Am I going to stay there? I, I um, am, you know, uh, not planning on staying there. Um, I, I may. It, it depends, of course, on uh, other job circumstances. Well, let this be a lesson to educators, to Texas A&M and others. Kids, earn the grades. You don't get them given to you. Professor, thank you very much. Stand your ground and stay there. I think it's an amazing thank thing. Thank you very you're, much. You're very welcome. Yes. Coming up next, let's find out what happened on Wall Street today, where you've also got to earn your grades. Next, right here on Midpoint.